NewCap soundings are now available in AWIPS. This is a training on those NewCap soundings that will explain how NewCap soundings are created, how to find them in AWIPS, and how to modify them. NewCaps is the NOAA Unique CRIS ATMS processing system. Combining information from CRIS, an infrared sounder, and ATMS, a microwave sounder. These are two instruments on board SUMI NPP, a polar orbiter with an orbit such that it scans the east coast around 5Z and 17Z, the planes around 7Z and 19Z, and the west coast around 11Z and 23Z. Data enters AWIPS via the data flow shown on the bottom. The downlink is its Svalbard, then a processing flow through different National Weather Service NOAA facilities takes it to the WFO. This processing takes about an hour, that is, the soundings appear in AWIPS 2 about an hour after the satellite scans the data. New cap soundings are produced using a regression and a physical retrieval. The regression step uses coefficients trained from cases that used all CRIS ATMS data and ECMWF model output on select days in the past to find the best statistical relationship between the satellite data and the profiles of temperature and moisture, best being subject to the constraints of the weather on the test days, of course. That training yielded a set of static coefficients that are used with present-day regressions. Regressions with the data use all channels, so they capture more vertical structure than in the physical retrievals that use a subset of CRIS channels. When a set of soundings is being produced, regression is done first with all new caps data to get temperature and moisture profiles. These data are used to do cloud clearing. More on that in a minute. Then the physical retrievals are done sequentially. The physical retrieval is done using a subset of 399 of more than 1,300 CRIS channels as shown on this chart. In the physical retrieval, the algorithm sequentially solves for temperature, moisture, ozone, and other trace gases. The first guess for this is climatology. Think about what that means if you are in a regime that deviates significantly from normal. There are 24 channels highlighted in green from which surface temperature is retrieved, 62 highlighted in red from which water vapor is retrieved, etc. The channels selected are most sensitive to one gas while being less sensitive to other gases. That is, they have high but not perfect spectral purity. All 22 ATMS channels are used in new caps. The ATMS retrieval is the solution if either the cloud carrying fails or if the CRIS physical retrieval fails. NUCAPS resolves about 9 to 10 vertical layers of water vapor and about 20 layers of temperature in the atmosphere. The charts on the page show the averaging kernel functions for temperature and it shows how the effect of one CRIS spectrum might be spread out in the vertical. There is some geographic variability to the kernels. Cloud clearing produced by a regression that uses all of the data, is an important part of the new CAPS algorithm. From the algorithm perspective, uniform clouds are the biggest problem. Each new CAPS footprint contains nine CRIS fields of view. If there is spatial variability to the clouds among those nine fields of view, new CAPS will nevertheless produce a good product. If there are uniform clouds across that 50 kilometer scene with nine fields of view, then it's more likely to be rejected, even if there aren't a lot of clouds. New cap soundings have been available since 2013, and the best resolution is in the mid-troposphere. The first guess is derived from climatology. If the physical retrieval using CRIS fails, or if the cloud clearing fails, a microwave-only retrieval will be done for temperature and moisture. A physical retrieval is used to produce the sounding, minimizing the difference between observations and calculations. If the environment really deviates from normal, the retrieval has to do a lot of work to converge to a solution. If that convergence to a solution doesn't happen, the sounding is still produced, but it's flagged. What is observation minus calculation? The observation vector is a cloud-cleared radiance spectrum that uses a subset of CRIS radiances. The calculation vector is from a radiative transfer model that uses the regression solution trained with the ECMWF and climatology. 
The final output is mapped to 100 levels that are standard for a radiative transfer model. If you view the data in AWIPS, you'll notice that the 100 levels are always the same pressure surfaces. It's really more levels than are resolved. How do you access NUCAP soundings in AWIPS 2? NUCAP soundings are satellite data. They sit under the satellite tab in AWIPS 2. Click on it, and then click on NPP products. Under NPP products, you'll see NUCAP's sounding availability. Click on NUCAP's sounding availability. Clicking on it will bring up the location of the latest NUCAP sounding points, which are denoted by green circles. That is, soundings are available at each of the green points. These are from a 1447 UTC pass, and note that the plot was done at 1635Z. The swimming NPP pass after 1447 will be along the coast, just before 17Z, and it will take about an hour for those points to show up in your AWIPS2 session. This shows the new cap sounding points plotted on top of a VIRS.64 micron image. Note that the new cap sounding data do not extend to the edge of the swath. Plotting soundings over data like this allows you to anticipate where soundings might have difficulties because of clouds. I will show you four soundings, one in North Carolina in clear air, one in North Carolina near a cloud edge, one in Kentucky that's in deep clouds, and one near Sarasota, Florida. The sounding in clear air over North Carolina is smoothly varying, as is typical for atmospheric soundings derived from satellite with a well-mixed boundary layer. The sounding near the cloud edge shows much drier air aloft and a somewhat more moist lower level. The sounding in deep clouds probably failed to converge, and an error flag is available. AWOPS software is being modified to use that error flag so that you know the sounding is bad before you look at it. Soundings such as such as these that look non-physical are most common in regions of thick cloudiness, so use NUCAP soundings with caution in such regions. That's a good reason to plot the sounding locations, the green dots, over satellite information. Upper-level information for this sounding, such as the tropopause height, may still be useful. The N-sharp sounding display includes methods to edit or display the data. For example, click on Show Text to see values. This will open a window that includes NUCAP's sounding data at the defined levels, the lower part of the atmosphere of those 100 levels. Pressure, height, temperature, and dew point are shown. There are no winds. This is, again, the point in clear air over North Carolina. Here's the border of Carolina, North Carolina, and Virginia. NUCAP's data are plotted on top of GO Sounder DPI total precipitable water. Surface METARs are also plotted to give you an idea of what the temperature dew point at the surface in the sounding should be. And here's the sounding again from the clear air with the well-mixed boundary layer. If you think values in the sounding are wrong, you can edit them. This shows two windows. The one on the left is brought up by the Show Data tab that lists out the soundings. The window on the right is the sounding data editor. If you click Edit Data, that's what you get. It preloads all the data. Highlight the level you want to edit. Click Edit Selected Level, which will fill in the table of current and new values. And then you can change values and hit Apply. In this case, we're moistening the surface, raising the dew point from 55 to about 64, a value that is more in line with the plotted METARs. The original sounding is then modified. In this case, not much has changed other than the surface dew point, which we changed on that chart. The cape has increased a little bit, the LCL is dropped, and an equilibrium level is now present. This is the final point over Sarasota. Notice that there are METARs there with temperatures and dew points. We're going to apply those to the sounding. The original sounding near Sarasota that we will edit. Highlight the level you want to change. Hit Edit Selected Level, and the current value should pop up. In Edit 1, we've increased the dew point temperature by 2 Celsius. And in Edit 2, we've increased the surface temperature by 1 Celsius. This brings it more in line with the observations as shown in the METARs. Again, here's the original sounding. 
This is the sounding from edit number one. We have a warmer dew point here. Notice how the LFC and the LCL have dropped and the equilibrium level has risen. You would expect an increase in CAPE for such a change. And increasing the surface temperature in edit number two also changes the sounding. This is a more forecast specific use for the soundings. Will that broken cumulus field on the border of Iowa and Nebraska develop into some convection? The GFS is predicting QPF for later in the day. SUMI NPP overflies the central United States around 18 or 19 Z. This provides timely information on the state of the atmosphere in early afternoon. Here we have three different scenes zooming in from North America to the plains to the WFO in Omaha Valley. Let's look at the sounding in eastern Nebraska, circled in red. This sounding has a surface temperature and dew point that are close to observations, so we needn't edit the sounding to bring it into accord with observations. The cape is small. Would you expect convective development? Convection did not occur. A couple days later, Omaha experienced severe weather. This image shows the storm reports, damage, and two new cap sounding sites from 1849 UTC on June 3rd. Note also the gradient and dew point in the plotted METARs. The next page shows the new cap sounding for the site just south of the Omaha WFO, the one in the green box. This is the new cap sounding about 10 kilometers south of OAX. From On the previous scene it was boxed in green. It's a cloudy scene, but you still get information from this new cap sounding. If you modify the sounding, that is, edit it, and add in the surface METAR OBS, or the temperature of 83 and a dew point of 63, the surface base CAPE was almost 1900. So here's a zoomed out view of where that new cap sounding is, the one that is boxed in green. Zooming in again, we see the sounding from the cloudy region boxed in green, and also a second sounding location to the south, where skies are clearer. Two points are warmer there, too. Here is the unmodified new cap sounding at that southern site. Surface base cape is around 700, but the surface temperature and dew point in the sounding do not match the METARs. This is a good sounding to edit. Once the sounding is edited so that its lowest temperature and dew point match the METAR, the surface base cape exceeds 3000. This kind of timely information should influence your interpretation of the present conditions. How far can you push the new cap soundings to give you information? Here they are spread over an isolated cumulus field over Oklahoma. Do you expect the sounding differences running north-south across that cumulus field in western Oklahoma to be strong or subtle? Here are three soundings running through the field. The one in the cumulus field is closer to saturation in mid-levels. If new cap soundings had run through this region before the cumulus developed, would you be able to use the information for a forecast? Time and experience with the sounding fields will guide your interpretation of new cap soundings. Here's another example of new cap soundings that span a cloud field. We'll be looking along the southern edge of these clouds over South Dakota. That is, we'll look at these five soundings. There are subtle, noticeable differences between soundings in clear and cloudy regions. New CAPS data can provide useful information for a forecaster to interpret with care. A summary of the training is on this slide. Thank you for listening. This concludes the training on New CAPS sounding data in AWIPS 2.